Our objective in this lesson is to simplify radicals through rationalization. Once again, here are the conditions for a radical to be considered in simplest form. I already have separate videos for 1 and 2. Now we are going to talk about 3 and 4. The radicand is free from fractions and the denominator is free from radicals. Take a look at these expressions. What is common on all this? Let's take this one. It is a radical that contains a fraction. And when we separate the numerator and the denominator, it will look like this. So these expressions have denominators that contain a radical. In mathematics, a radical expression is in simplest form if the denominator is free from radicals. So that is our objective for today. We are going to remove the fraction inside the radical and we are going to make the denominators free from radicals. But the question is, how do we change the denominator of the fraction without changing the value of the fraction itself? The answer is, by multiplying both numerator and denominator by the same number. Here's an example. Let's say we have one half. And if I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by a same number, let us say 2, the answer here will be 2 over 4. I was able to change the denominator from 2 to 4 without actually changing the value of the fraction because 1 half is equal to 2 fourths. We can also do this in radicals. And this is what we call rationalization. It is the process of changing the radical denominator to a rational number. Let us say we have 1 over a square root of 5. Let us focus our attention on square root of 5. To what expression are we going to multiply a square root of 5 to make it a rational number? I'm going to multiply this by itself, by a square root of 5. Because a square root of 5 times a square root of 5 is a square root of 5 squared. And property of radicals, since the index here is 2, I can cancel the index and the exponent 2 here. So this is equal to 5. I was able to change the radical into a rational number. So this means I'm going to multiply my numerator and denominator by a square root of 5. So this is 1 times a square root of 5 is a square root of 5. And then square root of 5 times a square root of 5 is 5. So now I do not have radical on my denominator. Let's have another example. So I'm going to multiply this with a square root of 3 over a square root of 3. 8 times square root of 3 is 8 square root of 3. And then square root of 3 times square root of 3 will be 3. No more radical in the denominator. Now, what if I have 7 root of 7? If I am going to multiply this with 7 root of 7 as well, this will give me quantity 7 root of 7 is squared. Since the index is 7 and the exponent is 2, I cannot cancel them. So, meaning multiplying 7 root of 7 by itself is incorrect. So to what expression I am going to multiply 7 root of 7? Since the exponent of 7 here is 1, I need 6 more to make it 7. So I'm going to multiply this with 7 root of 7 to the 6. Let us apply the property of radical. Since the indices are the same, we can combine this into one radical symbol. Applying the law on exponent, let us copy the base and add the exponents. The exponent here is 1, so 1 plus 6 is 7. So this is equal to 7 root of 7 to the 7. Now, my index and exponent are the same. So this is equal to 7. I was able to change the radical number into a rational one. Let us simplify the following. Number 1 is square root of 1 divided by 3. So first, I will separate the numerator and the denominator. The index here is 2 and the exponent of 3 is 1. So I need 1 more square root of 3 to make it 2. So I'll multiply the numerator and the denominator by square root of 3. 
Square root of 3 divided by square root of 3 is just 1. So it will not affect the value of the original fraction. So square root of 1 times square root of 3 is square root of 3. And then again, 1 plus 1 is 2. So my denominator will become square root of 3 is squared. So I can now cancel a square root and the exponent here too. So the final answer will be square root of 3 over 3. Next one is square root of 11 over 5. So once again, I will separate the numerator and the denominator. And then again, the index here is 2 and the exponent of 5 is 1. So I need one more square root of 5. So again, I'll multiply both numerator and denominator by square root of 5. A square root of 11 times a square root of 5 is a square root of 55. For the denominator, 1 plus 1 is 2, so a square root of 5 is squared. Then I will cancel a square root and the exponent here too. So final answer is square root of 55 over 5. Next one, 12 divided by a square root of 4. So the index here again is 2 and the exponent of 4 is 1. So I did one more a square root of 4. So I'll multiply the numerator and the denominator by a square root of 4. 12 times square root of 4 is 12 is square root of 4, and then this one will be square root of 4 is squared. Square root of 4 is 2, and then for the denominator, it will just be 4. So I have 12 times 2 over 4. 12 times 2 is 24 divided by 4 is equal to 6. Number 4, negative 6 divided by cube root of 54. 54 is 27 times 2. And 27 has a cube root that is 3. So I can factor out 3. So this will be negative 6 divided by 3 cube root of 2. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So this is negative 2 over cube root of 2. The index is 3, the exponent of 2 here is 1, so I need 2 more cube root of 2. So I'll multiply the numerator and the denominator by cube root of 2 squared. And 2 squared is equal to 4. Now in the denominator, the exponent here is 1 and this is 2, so it will become cube root of 2 cube. So I can cancel cube root and the exponent here 3. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. So the final answer is negative cube root of 4. Number 5, this time let's have variables. So again, let us separate the numerator and the denominator. The index here is 2, the exponent of n is 1. So I need 1 more square root of n. So I'll multiply both numerator and denominator by square root of n. Property of radical, if the indices are the same, we can combine this into one radical symbol. So this will be a square root of mn. For the denominator, this is 1 and this is 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2 is square root of n squared. So the square root and the exponent 2 will be cancelled out. So the final answer will be a square root of mn over n. No more radical in the denominator. Let us continue. Number 6, cube root of b divided by d. So I'll separate the numerator and the denominator. The index here is 3. The exponent of d here is 1. So I need 2 more to make it 3. So I'll multiply the numerator and the denominator by cube root of d squared. Cube root of b times cube root of d squared is cube root of b d squared. The exponent again here is 1, 1 plus 2 is 3, so the denominator is cube root of d cube. I can now cancel cube root and the exponent here 3, so the final answer is cube root of b d squared over d. No more radical in the denominator. Next one, 5x divided by fifth root of x cubed. So the index here is 5 and the exponent here is 3, so I need 2 more. So I'll multiply numerator and denominator by fifth root of x squared. 5x times fifth root of x squared is 5x fifth root of x squared. 3 
plus 2 is 5, so the denominator is fifth root of x to the fifth power. I can now cancel the index, fifth root, and the exponent 5, so the denominator will just become x. I can now cancel x, so the final answer is 5, fifth root of x squared. Let's continue, number 8. Fourth root of 2xy squared all over 8z cubed. So let us separate numerator and denominator. Now be careful here. Instead of multiplying both numerator and denominator by fourth root of 8 cubed, since you only have one 8 here and you need to make it 4, think of a number closest to 8 that has fourth root. And the closest number to 8 that has fourth root is 16. So to what number are you going to multiply 8 to make it 16? That would be 2. So we are going to multiply both numerator and denominator by 4th root of 2. Now for the variable, since the index is 4 and the exponent here is 3, you need one more. So let's multiply it with 1z. Now, 4th root of 2xy squared times 4th root of 2z, we're going to multiply the constants. 2 times 2 is 4, so this will be 4th root of 4xy squared z. For the denominator, 8 times 2 is 16, and 3 plus 1 is 4, so 4th root of 16z to the 4th power. The fourth root of 16 is 2. Then the fourth root and the exponent 4 will be cancelled out. So what will remain is z. So for the denominator, we have 2z. So the final answer is fourth root of 4 xy squared z all over 2z. So no more radical in the denominator. Last one, number 9, cube root of 2p to the 4th all over 4q. So p to the 4th, this is 4 and your index is only 3, so you can factor out 1p. And then separate the numerator and denominator. So this will be p, cube root of 2p, divided by cube root of 4q. Now for the denominator, think of a number closest to 4 that has cube root. And that is 8. So to what number are you going to multiply 4 to make it 8? You'll multiply it with 2. Now for the variable, since the index is 3 and the exponent of q here is just 1, you need 2 more. So we are going to multiply both numerator and denominator by cube root of 2 q is squared. So p times cube root of 2p times cube root of 2q squared, 2 times 2 is 4, so this will be p, cube root of 4, p, q squared. Now for the denominator, 4 times 2 is 8, and then 1 plus 2 is 3, so cube root of 8, q cube. The cube root of 8 is 2, and then cube root and the exponent 3 will be cancelled out. So what will remain is 2q. So final answer is p, cube root of 4, pq squared, divided by 2q. No more radical in the denominator. Quick tips, multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same number will not change the value of the fraction. Multiply the numerator and the denominator by nth power that will eliminate the radical in the denominator. Now, it is time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. Let us answer number 1. So we're going to multiply both numerator and denominator by square root of 6. So we have 4 times square root of 6 and then the denominator will just be 6. 4 and 6 are divisible by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Therefore, our final answer is 2 is square root of 6 over 3. 
Next, number 2, before multiplying both numerator and denominator by square root of 3, let us combine this into one radical symbol. And 15 divided by 3 is 5. Therefore, the answer is a square root of 5. Number 3, since the index is 3 and the exponent of 4 here is 1, we need 2 more. So we're going to multiply numerator and denominator by cube root of 4 is squared. 10 times cube root of 4 squared, 4 squared is 16, it will be 10 cube root of 16. For the denominator, the exponent here is 1, then 1 plus 2 is 3, so cube root of 4 cube. 16 is 8 times 2, and cube root with the exponent 3 will be cancelled out, so this will just be 4. The cube root of 8 is 2, so we could factor it out. It will be 10 times 2 cube root of 2 over 4. 10 times 2 is 20, and 20 divided by 4 is 5, so we have 5 cube root of 2. Last one, let us separate the numerator and the denominator, and then I'll express 18 as 9 times 2. A square root of 9 is 3, I could factor it out, so this is a square root of 5x divided by 3 is square root of 2. Then I'll multiply numerator and denominator by a square root of 2. A square root of 5x times square root of 2, 5 times 2 is 10, so a square root of 10x. And then a square root of 2 times a square root of 2 is 2, so this is 3 times 2. 3 times 2 is 6, so we have a square root of 10x over 6. Gets 